Hey guys, I'm Joe, and in this video I'll be showing you how to create a simple sub bass to add depth to your tracks and your bass sounds. Using a sub is a really great way to thicken up your sound. For this simple sub you'll need a blank ES2 synth, so we'll go over here and click on that to open it up. Factory default should automatically load, and if no you can go up here and click on recall default, default so you can start from scratch. The simplest sub bass sound you can achieve is by using sine waves. The sine waves are the most basic waveform with no harmonic frequencies, so it creates a very pure sound. To select the sine waves, we'll be using oscillators 1 and 2 over here, and we won't be using 3, so we can turn that off just by clicking on the number 3. There we go. So now that only two of the oscillators are active, we will select the sine waves over here. You can do this by clicking and dragging the dial on here, down to where it says sine. I'll do that on both. It's both in the same place, so they'll both look like this. Just on the left of the waveforms, you can see a dial which changes the pitch that the oscillator will produce. You can click it and drag it around to increase or decrease the pitch that it will produce. This dial will change it in semitones, or you can double click down here where it says 0C and you can change that to change the sense. Uh, 100 cents is a semitone, so this is for more, far more precise pitch shifting. We'll leave the first oscillator alone and on the second one we'll decrease the semitones by 12, which is an octave. We'll also leave the sense as 3. The reason we've done this is because now the sound will be much deeper and, and in the sub frequencies. Uh, the change in sense is to create a slightly thicker sound on it. To the right of the waveforms, there is a triangle over here, which is essentially the mix of the two oscillators. So by dragging around the marker, you can increase and decrease how much signal is sent from an oscillator. The top of the triangle is oscillator number one, the left is oscillator number two, and the bottom is three. As we won't be using three, the marker will strictly stay on this line, uh, having zero in the mix of the third oscillator. Now if I hold down and play a note and move the cursor, you can hear the difference in between the mix of the two oscillators. So. As you can hear, it's getting much deeper going towards oscillator number two as that is pitch shifted down an octave. I find that a good mixture of these two is to have it about 60% on oscillator number one and about 40 on number two. Now that we have the basic sound, as you can hear, there is a slight click or popping sound when I play a note. Just at the very start of the note being played. Now I'm, not, I'm really not a fan of using that in my track, so to get rid of that, we simply increase the attack on envelope number three down here. So we click on this cursor and drag that up. I tend to keep it around 13, like that. There we go. Now when I play a note, it's certainly reduced, it's almost gone, but it's ever so slightly still there. Increasing the attack basically means that the sound will fade in slightly when the note is played. As the attack is still short, it's not really noticeable, but it does help with the removing of the harsh popping sound. As this is just a basic sub sound, we can leave the filter alone for now, and the effects, we can just leave them as they are. This is all you need to do on the ES2 to create a basic sub sound, and the second thing you need to do is to use some EQ. So we'll close this, go over here, and open up the EQ by double clicking that. Now I'll play, I've created a loop and I'll play this and bring up the analyzer to show you just what frequencies are being played. So I'll click on this and hit play. Now it's just, it's effectively just a four to the floor kick drum pattern as it's a good way to thicken up your kick sound. Uh, as you can see it's mainly the uh, sub frequencies down here, the really low end, as the notes being played are C1 on the keyboard. Now the frequencies we want to get rid of are some of the extreme low end of around 30, 30 to 35, just simply because uh, most speakers can't play those frequencies and it will be wasted energy in your mix. And the other frequencies we want to get rid of are all of the high end because this is a sub and there's no need to even have them in there. So what I like to do is I bring it down to about 85 hertz to get rid of absolutely everything. There we go, now when I play. It's just a pure sub sound with, without any of the harsh popping or the clipping at the start of each hit. A sub bass is a really great way of giving your bass more power and even your kick that push it needs to sound bigger. Uh, I'll take a screenshot of the ES2 as it is now and the EQ and upload it to Imja so you can easily view it from up there. Uh, I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment or write to me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.